Hey, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy, and you're on the lifeboat. Hope you're having a good weekend. <clears throat> this one, people, is not any fun. I'm going to be honest with you. This one's not going to be any fun. But uh, this is a case that a lot of you have written to me about and uh, kind of wanted um, my take on. And in the beginning, they're just, um, I mean, it's an unfortunate case. There wasn't a whole lot, I think, to uh, to talk about and to go on. The uh, Obviously, the, the case has changed pretty dramatically, right, here in the mm -hmm. last little bit. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the, uh, we know now it's a, a murder case, right? The, uh, the body was, uh, was found for a little uh, brief timeline on the uh, 26th of February. Madeline Soto's mother, Jennifer Soto, called the uh, police department. Hello, Lisa. Good to see you. Called the police department and said, hey, come out here. My daughter. Um, is missing, didn't uh, didn't ever come home from school. Her boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, uh, dropped the uh, daughter off at school or up the street from school. The uh, child did not want to be seen, according to um, the stepfather, boyfriend, whatever you want to call this, low life. Uh, the, she didn't want to be seen. Uh, you know what, if you're a parent, I think we've all dealt with that one. That's, that's probably rings true. I remember when all of a sudden I wasn't cool anymore. You know what I mean, remember the first time I went to a movie theater with my kid and he was like, can you and I'm sit a few rows back? I was like, oh, my God. I remember looking at my wife and being like, we're uncool. Can you believe this crap? Like We've actually reached a, an age where we're uncool. But he claimed that he dropped Madeline off by the church so that she could walk up to school and look a little bit more independent. Uh, she never arrived at school. In fact, video that day shows this low life throwing um, some of her school stuff into a dumpster, right? She drove through town, stopped off to get rid of some of her possessions by throwing them in the dumpster. He's seen in the car in that video. It is assumed she's already deceased in that, uh, in that video. A lot of people are freaking out about this, and I know this because you're emailing me. Why have they not charged this low life? People, they got no reason to be in a hurry. What they want to do is put together a case on this that is going to be so mother-loving bulletproof that this dude has got no shot on appeal. This dude has got absolutely no chance of ever seeing the light of day. Now, a bonus is he doesn't have a chance of getting out, right? He's not going to disappear. He's not going to run. And I'm going to be honest, from a convict standpoint, I think they mishandled this case. And I'm just going to tell you from a convict standpoint, I'm not a... I'm not a cop. I'm not a genius. But I promise you, from a, just when you hear me out, you're going to see that maybe this wasn't such a great idea how they did this. They got a hold of dude's phone. And this low life has been uh, assaulting this child, this baby girl, since she was 11 at a minimum. And we know this because there are videotapes on his phone, video, videos, whatever, on his phone. Of these, uh, of him with this little girl assaulting her. I feel honestly, my heart goes out to the cops that had to look at that crap. Honest to God in heaven, they had to, they had to look at all of this stuff they had to try to determine if this took place in this three bedroom condo that they lived in, fourteen hundred square foot three bedroom condo that Stephen Stearns was at occasionally. He didn't live there all the time. Apparently, he spent a lot of time at mom and dad's house. If you listen to her interviews that she did with the local affiliates for um, the news. He butchers these interviews. I'm sorry, people. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be the behavior panel. By the way, I love the behavior. Huge shout out to the behavior panel. If, you, if you're not a, uh, if you don't know what this is, you really should check it out and you should see them take apart. I know that if I put it up here, we'll run into all kinds of trademark stuff. And I mean, the copyright stuff. But they do an amazing job looking at the uh, the interviews that were done by her mom and also by this low life Stephen Stearns. But the mother says a lot of contradictory statements. Now I will chalk up the fact that we don't know, right? And that could mean that this woman was terrified of Stephen Stearns. I'm willing to chalk that one up. I'm willing to say that. She was so traumatized by this dude that she was afraid that if she said the wrong thing, she was going to be dead. That's the only way in my head that you can look at this woman and not think that she's filthy. 
filthy. Now that he is away, I find that um, I figure the truth needs to come out quickly now. Because if you watch her interviews, they don't make any sense. I have watched, I literally went and started looking at legitimate family members whose kids are missing. They will say their kid's name about 65 times. They want the world to know what their kid looks like. When you see these interviews, right? Stanky is 30 years old, right? He's, he's got long hair. He kind of looks like a Viking. He's got some scratch on here, right? He's a good kid. They start describing the, the, the characteristics, right? You start to describe the characteristics of your kid because you want people. The people doing these interviews are saying, what's your, how old's your daughter? What's her name? You're talking to the press, trying to get the world to find your kid. They said, has there been any kind of searches organized? Her response was a lot of people have reached out to me and said they're willing to do that if we put something together. Trust and believe if Spanky or Cedar are missing, you're not finding me at my house for an interview. Right? I'm going to be out putting together a search team. I'm sorry, people. Nothing that this woman does made any sense. Made any sense. No. Maybe she's a victim in this, right? Maybe she's a victim, but dude's now in jail, right? Not any threat whatsoever to her. I would imagine the truth needs to come out real quick. Or you go watch this and tell me if you think that maybe she's not in on this. She sure as crap ain't telling the truth. She says, he came over to get her. So wasn't living there, right? He came over to pick her up. Watch the, the, the if you watch the interviews, and I can't put them up here, right? Well, I'll be uh, wrestling with them forever. So I'm not going to do that. But watch the interviews. She contradicts herself constantly. She also refers to this dude by boyfriend, partner, stepdad, depending on what time they're asking her questions. I believe you, Lisa. I believe you, Lisa. I really do. I think this is what most mothers are going to say, right? And most dads. I think that I think that the response from most people are going to be, not my kid. There's no way in hell. I'd rather be dead. Right? I'd rather be dead. I think that that's going to be everybody's response on this. Um, I absolutely, after watching all of the videos, assume without a shadow of a doubt, and I respect your opinion, sweet koala. I really do respect your opinion. But if you go watch this, and people who do this for a living are also doing this and looking at her and her activities after this, and her, her responses make zero sense. A mother does not need to be coaxed into saying the name of her child when being interviewed but there are just certain things that are so pro forma done, right? She is terrified, but she's not terrified that her daughter's missing. Watch the interview. She's trying to justify that she did everything right. She is a mother trying to make the world know that she's doing everything she could. She did everything right. It's a very, very disturbing thing. Now, I'd love to be found wrong. I really would. I'd love to be found wrong on this one. And I will come here and eat a whole pile of crow. But go watch the interviews. Watch them. They're disturbing as hell. And the story changes. The beautiful thing about the truth is it doesn't freaking change. Right? You can say what you did. And it's very, very simple. But this one's unfortunate. And as I said, I'm willing to chunk up the fact that maybe this woman is such a traumatized human being, because we don't know how sick this rascal is. We do know that he was sick enough to do this to a baby and film it. He's a pretty sick individual, right? This dude ain't right. But there's a lot that that um, that is coming out already that is really casting a lot of very disturbing questions concerning uh, Ma. There's a lot of stuff in here that just ain't checking out not making a whole lot of sense uh and <laughs> you know it's it's the thing i don't know man i think that it's yeah jen marie i promise you people do this and check them out over on the behavior panel these are four individuals who do this for a living who are trusted by governments and major corporations to break down what people do and how they do it in the course of an interview and the, the interesting thing, if you've never seen these people, is they're not there to tell you they're just there to pick apart what these people say and the veracity of what these people say based on not the case, not everything that went on, just, just the videos we're watching. Watch this and tell me what you think kind of thing. And they're professionals. And I'll be really honest. I've watched a lot of stuff that these guys do. I find it wildly entertaining. 
And uh, all four of them are such unique personalities. It is a really entertaining thing uh, for me. And it's something I can watch and shot in one camera, right? Uh, but very rarely do they, very rarely do they say, I, I, I think this person did this. I think this person is well aware of everything. That's that's not really the uh, the tack they normally take. Um, they're they're pretty damn convinced. This is one of the most disturbing interviews you've ever seen, right? A little bit of background noise, and she stops and grins and waits for all of the sound to go away before she starts talking again. You watch this woman's interview as a mother, as a father, as a brother, or a sister, or a girlfriend, or boyfriend, or anyone who had a relationship, and if somebody that you were really close to was missing. Tell me if any of that rings true to you. Watch it. And then watch the boyfriend. Obviously, we know that, that he's a little late. There's, the, there's no mistake in that, right? The video is on that phone. We'll take care of that. I'm also really curious of how this happens in a 1,400 square foot, three bedroom apartment, right? This is disturbing. And I'm not going to get into the stuff that you can go and read yourself, but it's. It's really hard to imagine that this goes on for years. Not impossible. It isn't, of course. But it's hard to, uh, to, to come to grips with that. For me, it is. It really is. Um, you know, if you're in a 6,500 square foot home, but uh, for years in a very, uh, and it, that's it's not huge. It's pretty cramped. Uh, and this was going on literally for years, uh, open to the point where he's filming it. He's filming it. This is uh, it's so disturbing that it's. I know this is difficult. It really is. I, I mean, it's 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 absolutely disgusting to have to say this crap out loud. It really is. There's also a very odd angle on this. Allegedly, allegedly, this man may have worked for Disney, and that frightens a lot of people. Now, Disney is saying, oh, no, Stu never worked at Disney. I don't know what the you're talking about. And there are people who are saying that perhaps, allegedly, it could have been Epcot. And they're kind of sidestep and say, well, he wasn't, at, he wasn't at Disney. But he may have been an employee who was working at, at Epcot. He wouldn't smear them. You know what I mean? Doesn't, I'm sure that this happens, right? You got a corporation that employs tens of thousands of people. You're going to get some low lives. But that is a, uh, that's kind of a side story that's, uh, that's playing out with this. Um, Again, the, uh, the, the, there's a large segment of society that wants this cat to be charged tomorrow. You understand that what they found on this phone is going to make sure this guy never leaves prison. He's never going to get out of prison just for what was found on that phone. Now, knowing that, I think everybody should probably be very, very happy with the, um, with the fact that they're going to uh, to dot I's, cross T's, and make sure that there is absolutely nothing that is ever going to come up on appeal that's going to give this low light a shot at ever sniffing the air of freedom again, right? And I am really hoping that he spends at least a couple of days in mainline, you know, in general population. I'm hoping that there's at least a couple of days that this cat spends in GP. Because if there's ever been anybody that deserves to walk the main line, it's uh, it's Stefan or Stefan, whatever the hell his name is, Stefan Starnes. This is a cat that deserves to not be in, uh, in PC. They were not married. They were not married. He did refer to him in part of the interview as her stepdad. Um, in another part of the interview, she says, I'm not the one that took him to school that morning. My partner did. Which was a, uh, and then just some very odd stuff. Um, what was she wearing that morning was one of the questions. He was last seen was the answer. And I'm sorry, but it's just, it sounds like something that is said on a dispatch, right? It doesn't sound like something a mother would say. I don't know. Call me crazy. I think when we see this one played out, he's either going to be suffering so badly from what this guy did to her, that her mental, uh, you know, she's fried. And this happens. I mean, think, think about it legitimately. You're, if you're being tortured by somebody systematically for years, we've seen what it does inside of cults. The same thing happens one-on-one, -on -one, right? The, there is, this is a real thing, right? This is a real legitimate thing. Um, there have been cases, right? We've, we've all 
uh, seen some of the horrific cases of people where you go, how did they not walk out? You know, the uh, the case comes up, it comes to mind of the girl in Lake Tahoe who was kidnapped when she was a teenager and was literally kept captive for decades. And people go, you know, how, did, how does she not walk away? Because she's got no concept of anything in the world. Imagine being captured at 12. Your entire life is right there, right? Right there. Um, it, I think that, and, and I agree. The reason I'm saying this is I, I agree with the people who are saying, hey, be careful on the mother. I'm telling you right now, I, I understand where you're coming from because it's such a mind blow to what can happen. We don't know what um, Stephen Stearns has been doing to Jennifer Soto for the last two or three years either. And that I will throw in as a possibility, but I will not throw in as a possibility that this woman isn't somehow aware of what happened because those interviews are horrific. If you watch them, I promise you they're terrifying. We've all watched uh, interviews of people. This one is so off that it will it's cringy from start to finish, listening to the, the, the people from the press beg her to say what her daughter's name is and what the daughter looks like. How old is she again? I mean, everything they had to prompt. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes people needed to be prompt, but probably not for the name. That, that's weird. And all of the reactions, all of the answers are just macabre. They're so bizarre that it leaves you. The mother could be extremely naive, uh, sweet koala. I, I would encourage you to watch the interview a couple of times. I really would. Um, I try to go into these things with as open a mind as possible, but then I try to go into it as a guy that spent 46 years BS in the entire world, right? Because I did. And there are just... I don't know. It's like a, a BS meter. There are people who say, you know, I got a BS meter. Um, this one really, really doesn't smell right. Go look at it and tell me I'm wrong. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to hear your opinion. Is there anybody that watched that? Honestly, whose takeaway was, I don't think mom had anything to do with this. Did anybody watch all that and get that? Her interview was strange as all get out. Need some sleep says, yeah, no, I, I, I really agree. Hmm. Um, AKA Chester's mom couldn't have been an easy thing to type. I really appreciate you sharing that with everybody here. That had to be hard to write. Um, and I'm sorry that, that anybody endures this, but thank God you're with us, right? Because so many people don't uh, don't end up that way. Rachel F. says, I don't buy mom's story. Uh, my BS meter was definitely registering some bull. Uh, I think, I think that, um, well, you know what, dude, mom, this is interesting. That's a great question, right? This is, I think, a really great question. How did she come for him in that interview? I think this is a really interesting question. And the guys on the, behavior, uh, on the behavioral uh, panel talked about this as well. But you get the feeling with the answers that she's you will even see the the looks the, the eyebrows coming up as a look of approval and you're wondering who the look of, of approval is for it would have been really interesting i think if you could have seen who was in the room for that interview right was stepping right off camera because that to me that's kind of the feel i got tell me if i'm crazy but that is kind of the feeling that i got i got the feeling that it almost feels like Maybe uh, maybe dude was right off camera. Do you think I'm nuts? Renee Noel, good God, what a frightening thing, huh? Renee Noel, I was kidnapped in 19, had to jump out of a car to, uh, he as he turned to stop sign, I rolled into the ditch as he sped away. Sweet koala, I love you. Let me tell you what, what's going on here. What's going on here is I have looked at all of the evidence and I'm giving you my opinion, which is pretty much what I do here as a show. Now, I think, and I'm pretty confident, that 99% of people who watch it are going to come away with the same opinion. I am encouraging people to go do exactly that. Go watch this woman's behavior and tell me what you think. And the people who dig this true crime genre are looking to do just this. This is kind of what um, people in this genre do. Uh, I promise you, I'm not coming out here to uh, try and destroy this woman's reputation. I assure you that's already done. 
right? Her interview, I'm sorry, destroyed her reputation. Whether or not that's legit or not is unfortunate. But that interview, there's anybody that's seen it, right? The vast majority, I have yet literally to one into one person who watched it and thought, I don't think she had anything to do with it. But everybody I talked to says, yeah, that's pretty harsh. And the professionals who are watching, right? Behavioral people are going, this woman's in her eyeballs in knowledge about this, right? And there are, they have terms for all of this, right? Trailing off at the end of the sentence when you're a little bit. There are th certain things, affectations that people who are being deceptive do so often that they train people on what to look for, right? It is such a part of human behavior that it's trainable and discernible, right? To look for these things is deceptive. And this woman's off the chain with virtually every one of them. Well, sweet koala, you're right. The interview is definitely very off. I'm giving you my opinion why. You are giving me your opinion why. And we're going to come back and see who's right in about a week. Right? That's what we do. Um, I saw this too. I've seen this now on three uh, different, uh, in three different places. One is in written form and two is in podcast. But when you try chasing it down, I don't see where it comes from. I feel like it's been, somebody said it. I can't find, there's nowhere that you can actually track it down to where it says like, um, you know, the, uh, she told a friend this or, uh, you know, in, in a, a police interview, it came out that. Now, there are people that are talking about this um, and you may have seen it on a podcast. I did, but I, uh, I feel a little weird popping off with that until there's maybe just a little bit more of a way to, you know, to document it. But I have heard this. This is something that people are talking about, and that's creepy as hell. That said, every time something like this comes out, the speculation, especially when the story is disturbing, right? Um, the more disturbing the story, the more the speculation. And I don't know that we've had one this disturbing in a very long time. Um, I would not be shocked to learn that the mother had been through some terrible experiences, but her story and the facts conflict in a way that makes it impossible for me to believe that she had no idea. Um, Midwest Kid Doc. Uh, I think you've probably said that a little bit more articulately than I did in the beginning. <laughs> um, honestly, I think you did a, a better job of, uh, of saying that, but that is that's pretty much where I'm going with this. I do think she's a victim. I think she's a victim. But I think she's a victim that knew uh, before she did that interview that her daughter was not with us. And her answers, I think, give that away pretty pretty viciously. It's my opinion. Could, could come out to be, uh, to be incorrect. But it's kind of what I do. I'm pundit of sorts. I am your uh, convict opinion giver. And here it is. My opinion is uh, a couple of things. Number one. Right now, they probably got old Stefan in a uh, in a green jumper, right? That looks a lot like a dress. Uh, he is not going to be on any line. This cat's in um, the most protective, protective custody that you are ever going to come across. Uh, and more than likely on the watch, making sure that he doesn't unalive himself. Uh, and I, Barb, I am going to agree with you 100%. I really really uh, had a struggle. Um, you know, the big takeaway for me watching that was just how frightened this woman is. That's why I said, you know, maybe this is a battered woman syndrome, which is, I think, a completely real uh, and legitimate thing. You know, you continue to to break someone down. Um, and it's amazing what uh, what happens to um, to human beings. And I think that Jennifer Soto very well may be a very, very abused woman. And I am that's horrific. It really is. But whatever is going on, um, the, the the veracity of what was said at that uh, at those interviews isn't going to pan out. Venus Blue Jean said, did you know that Florida has a village for freaks called miracle village over 200 and the usual rules somehow don't apply there i do know what you're talking about it is um it is a uh, a community that somehow um literally has become a uh like a park for freaks for people that have all been convicted of this and she's right because 
the distance of this little freak village in proximity to a school is too short for any of them to technically live there legally, right? There's a lot of things like that, but for whatever reason, I guess it's that there, there is nowhere that they can put these people. Don't get me started on where we could put these people. Okay, I promise you, I could very creatively come up with a place to put these people, but that's me. Um, I, I feel horrific for Jennifer Soto. I feel horrific for Jennifer Soto. The realization that um, that your child is gone, if, if you did everything right, the realization that your child is gone would drive me off the edge. I don't think I could live. Honestly, I don't know how I would do it. Um, I guess that everybody thinks that and then, you know, you find that in a strength. I don't know where that strength would come from with me. I don't know. I really don't. But under these circumstances, right, where you're going to spend the rest of your life wondering if I had done this at this point, right, at what point could I have stopped all of this? I mean, that is going to be something that um, she wrestles with regardless of what her involvement or knowledge of this was, right? But I'm going to ask you a question. I'm just being real, right? Like, I haven't been married in a while. I haven't been. But when I was married, my wife knew the password to my phone. My wife would have come unglued at the prospect of not having the password to my phone. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't have secrets. I, it wasn't a thing for me. I didn't care. But she could get into my phone. Apparently, um, Jennifer Soto could not get into her, uh, you know, she had never been in that phone because that phone had a lot of the most disturbing images on earth on it. And, you know, I, I know it's not, you don't want to judge. God help us. It's a 1400 square foot home, right? When was all this taking place? It's, um, I hope I'm wrong. I'd be happy to come on here and apologize to the world, right? I really would be more than happy to. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. It's a disturbing concept, right? That is an absolute fact. Madeline said in this first, when the when she first disappeared, one of the reasons that people were not uh, freaking out as much as they might have should have is because she had said when she had 13, she intended to leave and go live in the woods. Um, I know kids say things that that's concern i think i know kids say things or whatever but she was pretty serious and told a lot of people that she intended to go live in the woods at 13 and she had turned 13 what two days earlier so you could see where even a cop would be like well maybe she went in the woods you know uh she she had told people that she had written it um yeah they found hundreds of images they also found videos and there are 60 counts uh venus blue jeans is right there are 60 counts against this six son of a this uh he's not a i mean this is you know and we want to change what we call these freaks because somehow uh you know using that p word hurts their feelings i'm really sorry people but there are uh, people on this planet that don't deserve sympathy it is insane it's absolutely insane but um hey kestrel i i come down on you with uh, on your side with this one Venus blue jeans. I'm going with that. Isn't that the, the, you, do you, you, do you prefer Jen? You know what I was thinking of was the song. Okay. Um, Shelly. It works, doesn't it? It really works. Although it almost feels disrespectful. Uh, almost feels disrespectful to animals, doesn't it? But I get your, uh, I really do get where you're, uh, where you're going. Um, I'd have a harder time putting down a dog. I promise you. Maybe that makes me a horrific human being, but I'd have a much more difficult time putting down a dog or a cat um, as I would uh, Stefan Stearns. Dude, uh, yeah, thank you, my other's keeper. Could you just vomit? MAP, right? We need this freaking uh, acronym in our life. Why? Because the other one's offensive. Who are we offending? God Almighty. You know what? I'll tell you what, if you're gonna if you're gonna unsubscribe over that one, please do. Huh? Please do. Um the big question for me is how many kids? Yeah, this uh Janet is a excellent question because 
And everybody who has ever dealt with these people in any way um, can tell you that they don't stop. This is something they continue to do. It's, it is literally, uh, it's, it's uh, part of these people to the point where that's not something they can stop. Okay. Which is why, um, I don't know, Jeremy Fowler's got a, a decent idea. I'm sorry. Lori Hart, that hurts my heart. I mean, it really does. It's, man, it's so sorry. She said, my mom didn't know and I didn't tell her because I couldn't hurt her more than she was already. I'm so sorry. I, I honestly feel so stupid every time somebody says something like that because it's just, I'm so comfortable when someone says that they need a fix, right? Because I get it. I understand that it makes sense to me. I can go, oh, I get that. I completely understand where you're coming from, right? I cannot understand what you're going through. I can try. And I think it's probably what makes us good people and better people is when we try to understand something that is so far out, instead of keep segmenting it down, maybe we all just try to say, you know, Try. I'm not going to be able to understand. I'm not, and I bet you couldn't understand a, a maximum security person. <laughs> but the the idea of people trying to understand maybe makes us a little bit better. Um, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> wait a second. Did that literally just change that fast? You do know that I have a problem with my dome, right? Are you messing with me? Did that say genesis? Oh, did you already change that to genes? I'm getting messed with. Uh, I'm, I'm not laughing, but the, the, the genes thing blew me away. Uh, 42 and just told my uh, my mom a few, uh, a few weeks ago. I, again, I can't imagine. And the fact that this is, if you, if you were to take a, a snapshot and you just watch the boat, you would think that there is a much larger re representation of this that happens than it does. But what it tells you is just how fast this can turn someone into something that someone who uses drugs as a way to cope with this. This is what you do to anyone, right? When you start to try to uh, assassinate their um, their soul, right? Because that's literally what it is. It's, it's the attempted murder of a soul. Johnny Scoville. You know what? He looked exactly like Bigfoot. Somebody's going to play this back. That was the Bigfoot walk. Oh, I wish I could remember the name of that uh, video. What, what do they call that video? Someone's going to put it up for me. So Venus Blue Jeans. Yeah. You, you, so you did do that to me. Okay. Thought it was me. It was me. Well done. Very quick. Very quick on your feet. <laughs> and I, uh, I appreciate that. The... Uh, the well, that's the same thing. Oh, what? Da -da 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 -da. You know, it's perfect. You're actually froze at a, at a place. Now, Lisa Marie says you did look like Bigfoot. Harry and the Henderson reference. Yeah. And that is really, uh, and that is really how it goes down, doesn't it? So sorry, Jen Marie. I, uh, yeah, Johnny makes me laugh too. I, I'm of the firm belief that you can get it back. Maybe that's a pipe dream, but I know mine was gone. Not for the same reasons, but mine was gone. I'm not saying I got it back yet, but I'm going to keep fighting because I think it's possible. I really do. And if I didn't, I'd probably end in the wrong line of work, right? But I really believe you can get it back. The process and it's not an easy one um it is it's a long and a horrific process and you know what there are going to be so many times where it, it'll probably feel like it's a mistake to keep doing it that you'd be better off if you just said you know what i'm not going to bother but i promise you that um the pursuit of uh of making of Making the best life that you can, in spite of a lot. Mo almost everybody here has got something dramatic. We can all we can all tell that trauma story. Everybody has it, and it's it's almost like you know every time every day there I hear one that's more horrific than the day before. Um, and and you know what? That's beautiful because that's it, right? You know what's amazing? 
what's amazing is sometimes the most powerful thing in the world is someone that says, I, think, I don't have any words, right? I can't think of anything smart to say. I'm, I'm super sorry that that happened. And you know what? We're going to be here every day and we're going to try to, uh, we're going to try to make sure that on the days that memories from things like this are so bad that it makes you want to get high, that you can reach out to us and we can at least um, try to get you through that. We may not, may not, we're not going to understand what makes the next person want to put a needle in their arm or a straw up their nose. And we don't have to. It's irrelevant. I've got another one for you. You don't have to have all the answers. In fact, you don't have to have any friggin' answers. People prefer if you have questions than answers. <laughs> no one wants you to tell them how to fix themselves. They want you to ask them things like, are you okay? Is there anything I can do to help you? Huh? You just want to hang out for a minute? You want to just sit in silence on the phone? Because I can do that. I mean, I can sit in silence. Or I can do that. Da -da 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 do it for about 15, 20 minutes until you hang up. You're sick of me. You understand the concept? Doesn't take a, doesn't take a tremendous amount of uh, of skill or intelligence to care. It really doesn't. Doesn't require anybody getting any good at anything or practicing anything. It's just one of those uh, things. Do you know it's really odd? How bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. Do you realize? I think I have. Well, maybe not. Um, this. I'm sorry, Venus. It is an earworm. Somebody did it to me like 25 years ago. I'm still doing it. Uh, I told when I was 11, I wasn't believed. I never tried again until I began healing. Boy, oh boy. I, uh, I really hope that there's nobody left on planet Earth that chooses not to believe a child that says that. I really hope they don't make that model human anymore. I hope it was just freaking continued sometime in the 60s or 70s and that just simply isn't made anymore. That would make me uh, really happy. Kelly Gerling says, my dad's bear hug, no words, was the most meaningful response I got when I found out my second son had died in utero at 30 weeks. Sometimes words aren't necessary. Well, there's some truth to that. There's some truth to that. I, uh, there was a time in my life where I got very sick and uh, it just was looking really, really bad. But uh, I had a friend that used to come over and say, get up, we're going out. And he was not very nice about it. And I would say, I can't, yeah, do you have any idea when I was sick? And he'd go, oh, I don't care. And the person I was with at the time would say he was just so cruel, but he was just, uh, or, or he'd come over and I'd say, I can't, I literally can't get off the couch. He'd say, well, I'm just going to sit here with you all day. And he would, he just didn't, uh, didn't want you to hang out alone and feel bad for yourself. And, you know, they're sometimes just being there. I guess who was sleeping on my porch tonight? Patty O Furniture. I was going to drop a intoxicated no joke. I mean, uh, no doubt joke, but I'm not. I mean, why else would someone sleep in here? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bear with me. I'm not doing any earworms, but bear with me. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it's just nice. Uh, there's a, um, 
there are a couple of really good Alice quotes about riding out the darkness. But uh, Carol, I'm so sorry. I uh, I would like to believe people. I really would. I would like to believe that. 75, 100 years from now, someone will be sitting in this chair and doing this and they're, they're going to be hard pressed to find somebody that can say, yeah, that happened to me. I'd really love to believe that. I don't know. Yeah, Deeming, I have been following this case. Um, it's interesting whenever the uh, the feds start fighting against uh, cops they because they do actually hate each other. It's I even watched it on the bank robbery stuff. Crazy as it is, where I was, they had to get the, the, the local boys to arrest me. For whatever reason, in that state, the FBI does now, you have to be turned over to the FBI by the state authorities. The FBI literally couldn't arrest me. It still to this day doesn't make any sense to me. But they brought in the state guys to arrest me. And you could just watch them. Like, they didn't get along. They didn't, They definitely didn't like each other. I had a, I had a bag on me, one bag and a dope in my pocket. And the cop pulled it out and he put it on the hood of the uh, police car with a syringe he had found. And uh, the, the guy from the, it was either an FBI, he was a Fed. I don't remember exactly what he was. He could have been an FBI agent. He could have been a, a uh, U.S. Marshal or whatever. But he came up and he goes, what is this? And the guy was like, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's heroin, but we're going to have to go and test it. And this night he's like, no, 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 what are you doing with it? And he's like, well, we're charging with it. And he's like, a bunch of bank robberies and a, and a $10 bag of dope. He's like, you think the cop might throw, I mean, the judge might throw one of them out. He's like, why don't, don't waste your time with this. And he goes, no, 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 no. That's not, you know, I don't know how you guys do it. But that's, you know, we, we don't do that. He's being charged with that. I swear to you, the Fed picked it, both, both of them up and threw it down the storm drain. And he went, oh, you're not going to charge me for destroying evidence, are you? And then walked away. And I remember thinking to myself, he did that just to be a dick. Like, there was no other reason for him to do that. He just did not want, you know, there was just that friction between the state and the, uh, and the, the feds. And it was, it was fun to watch. Although I wasn't having a particularly good day to really enjoy it. But. Lori Hart, don't you love a great friend? Honestly, don't you love a great friend? Yeah. You know what? That was one I missed. What a great comment. Right? You know what you did? You said everything that everybody else here thinks. <laughs> you know? Thank you, Midwest Doc. Please be safe. Midwest Kid Doc. It kills me um, to know so many have dealt with this essay, especially knowing most were unable to talk about it. I wish I could have protected you all. I do too. And I get that. I really do. That makes perfect sense to me. Oh, no, you didn't. What happens when you call a leprechaun short? He gets, oh, Offended. Um, I was going to say, same thing that happens when you call Tom Crucial. Eh? Not a tall man. Not a tall man. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'll have you know, the only reason I pick on Tom Cruise for being short is because the one time I met him, I guarantee you the lifts in his shoes were like seven inches. I'm not kidding. Like, you looked down at his feet and went, that was the strangest pair of shoes I've ever seen. It was wildly obvious that he was trying to be taller. And it just kind of made me. And he's a Scientologist. And who doesn't love crapping on Scientology? It's just fun. What is the Leprechaun community's answer to Comic Con? Nice. I see what you did there. Leprechaun. All right, people. This is uh, this is one we're going to stick with. I promise I am. And I love the fact that there are people here that want to defend Jennifer Soto. I really do. It says so much about who the people on the boat are. 
right? The, the default setting of kindness, I think, is the way to roll. And I will make you a promise, people. I, I came out here today and I told you my opinion. Right? My opinion is that this woman knew a whole hell of a lot more than she was letting on when they did the interview with her. That's my opinion. I hope so. I'll happily come on here and do a video where I say, I'm wrong. If you think I'm kidding, go look at all the videos I've done where I come out and say, I'm wrong. I do a lot of them. Uh, it had something to do with Q if you want to know the truth. Calls it keeping short accounts, right? When you know you screwed up, don't let four or five of those build up because then you'll get to a point where you're never going to want to take credit for four or five screw ups. But if you knock them out once at a time, if, if you say something that hurts somebody's feelings and you do it live, you should probably apologize live. Does that make sense? Those kind of things. So uh, I've told you my opinion on this woman. If it turns out that this woman is clean, I'm going to come on here and dedicate a show to it. I really am. I'm going to be 40 kinds of shocked. Promise you that. However, that said, if we're all honest, we've been shocked before, have we not? Has there been at least one case that shocked you? I remember the one that shocked me. In 2015, there was a case where it was the most ridiculous crock of crap you ever heard, where a guy broke in and he puts a this elaborate thing where his wife is kidnapped and there's headphones put on the, the guy with instructions, don't leave. And it, was, it just sounded like such a Hollywood script that everybody involved went, yeah, that just sounds a lot like BS. People like me, cops, even the cops came out and said, we're not buying any of that. In fact, this is a setup. The woman, ba 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 ba. As it turns out, that's exactly what happened. Not only did she get kidnapped, she got kidnapped the second time by the same person. And that's, so it happens. There are times everybody's wrong. That would be great here. But I'll be the first to come on here and tell you, because that's who I am, I promise. I got news for you. I'm not wrong. Watch the video. It's, it's sad. It really is. And it should make you a little upset. Do you know why? Because when a kid is being tortured for two years, we failed as a world. Right? We failed as a world. That kid went to school. That kid talked to people. That kid had a mom. Somehow, we failed as a world. I think our job as a world is to protect kids. I don't think we have any other job. If you could think of one, let me know. But I think that that's the only thing we really need to concentrate on as a society is to make sure that nothing happens to kids. Right? Let adults worry about themselves. But, you know, uh, they're in our care. They're completely, completely come into this world where if we don't take care of them, they ain't going to make it to the next day. Right? So that people who do not Yeah, I'm sorry for people who experienced abuse, and I am more sorry for people who still feel like they can't talk about it after decades, because that's horrific. They would have uh, had a murder charge already if they're not investigating her as well. This, Venus, is a very popular theory as well. Hey, Jason P., bud. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Uh, that is a popular theory as well. And uh, probably a, uh, a good one. Uh, probably a good one. Right. Yeah. Miss D, I love it. I really do. Hey, uh, Nick. Thoughts and prayers for our friend Nick. Huh? Sorry you're feeling under the weather, brother. And uh, I I hope that you feel better. I agree with you, Nat B. Take your time. Do you, when you've got this person, like you know what they're saying right today, and you can you can tell me how you feel about this, right? I come on here and I say allegedly, right? There are videos of him doing this, and we have to continue to say allegedly, right? There are videos on the on the phone. Videos. Not, not no legend about that. Sorry, I'm not playing that game. 
I'm not. Everyone else is still doing it. Allegedly, there are no, they're not. There are videos. They're not alleged. They're on there, right? He's he's been arrested for it. There's 60 charges. Not alleged about that. Uh, I don't have to wait until he gets convicted on that. Now, mom, that, that's a gray area. I, that was my opinion, right? But this dirtbag, this uh, Stephen uh, Stearns dude, he's uh, he's guilty of sin. And I hope the fellas, hope the fellas are watching television, right? Because this dude's all over it. I hope the boys down in Florida are waiting because uh, this is a guy. If ever there's been somebody that needs a little prison justice, it would be this guy. I am literally, it's, it's hard in your stomach to read the number of people who come and say that Yeah, sweet koala, I don't blame you, man. I really don't. Uh, Cindy Collins, I am not going to speculate on that because there have been reports of that and very similar to um, the reports about the mom um, being forced by the uh, boyfriend to dress like the daughter. The uh, that is this, It's the same kind of thing. I can't find where that's leaking out. It's not in the two the uh, two redacted documents that were released by the police department. I didn't find it in either of those. Well, the first one is so heavily redacted, it's retarded. You can't even read it. It's, it's so, I mean, it, they've, they've pared it down to where it's like five or six lines and nothing. Else. The second one, you don't want to read. It's disturbing beyond belief. There's a reason I'm not reading this stuff here. There, you know, it's not hard to find, but I'm not doing it here. Um, Thank you, Miranda Lee. That's a very kind thing to say. Um, Nat B, see, uh, it is not not in the affidavit. There is nothing. There was nothing in the in the affidavit that mentioned uh, post mortem stuff. There was also nothing in the affidavit about um, the the uh, the clothing stuff. I heard um, that the Cindy Collins. Uh, yeah, there are there were a lot of things that have come out that I really like when I. The notes are on here, but there's nothing that there's nowhere that you can find it that backs it up. Oh, I agree with you, sweet Koala. Uh, I, I, I think that you're probably spot on with this, right? That uh, this dude was a uh, is a very narcissistic and codependent relationship. We have these are the results. I think that that you're probably spot on with that. This was obviously a wicked unhealthy relationship. Uh, one of the other things that was odd is that according to uh, a lot of other people interviewed, these two had a really traumatic, sort of up and down relationship. They were always, uh, you know, on and off, on and off again. And it was either he was staying there and, and again, all of them sleeping in the same bed or uh, he was at mom's uh, and dad's house because they were fighting. But when they first asked her, you know, there was she made no reference to the fact that they ever had any kind of um, marital, despite the fact that they're not married, you understand what I'm saying, that they were never having any kind of um, relationship issues, which is obviously BS. And there was a lot of other things that just... Now, if dude's standing right there, right? But you would have to think if you were going to ask that question, you wouldn't do it in front of the dude, right? You would think as an investigator, you would realize that asking that question in front of, a, of your mate would make the answer irrelevant because if the mate's obviously somebody that's abusing you, you're not going to say that in front of them. I would have to believe that a, a cop would be smart enough, but not maybe it's not such a smart thing to say. All right, peeps, we're going to continue to follow this. I promise you, I will come back on here and I will eat a. Uh, a bucket's load of crow and look forward to it. I want this woman to have done everything she could to protect that baby. I want that to be the case. I really do. I want that to be the case. I don't think that's going to be the case. Nat B, uh, absolutely 100%. What was it that 
this has been going on for years. What happened at this birthday party that now necessitated getting rid of her? I, you want, oh, you know what, people? I almost went off the air without getting to the last part of this. Here's where I think they screwed up. Here's my convict opinion, right? You get that guy's phone. You get all of those images. Put it on a zip drive and hand him his phone back. Right? That's what you should have done. You should have put that crap on a zip drive and handed him his phone back and said, we can't get into it. Might get a warrant for you for another couple of, you know, for 48 hours from now or whatever, but we can't get into the phone. And then sit down and do an interview because they got no interview with this guy. They didn't ask him where he was, what time. They never got a chance to ask any of the questions and they're not going to because he's lawyered up to beat hell now. Right, you come out and you charge him with all of these cases. What's the worst thing that could have happened? He would have run. Well, you got four cops on him, right? Put put four guys on him when he runs. Now he's guilty, right? That shows right? people don't run if they're not guilty. I think I think they handled it poorly. I really do. Uh, yes, I said Cindy Collins. There were uh, multiple men at the party. It's, I have a feeling, people, that we haven't even begun to get disturbed on this case. I think that um, a lot of people, uh, this is this has captured uh, the attention of the uh, of the world, and it's just it's so freaking heartbreaking. It really is. But I'll tell you something. Do you know what's propelling this forward? I wish we could say that you know. This doesn't happen very often, and it's such a unique thing, but it's not. I'll tell you what's propelling this forward is the interviews that these two jack wagons gave, right? Because very often you get the, eh, with all due respect to our friend, there's only a handful of people that still think that this person may not be uh, involved in this. That's what pro- is propelling this forward. But think about it for a second. Why tell this guy? If you had him dead to rights, if you had him dead to rights, for real, tap his phone, follow him, see what he does. But I feel like doing it the way that they did it, you know, now you now you have no statement whatsoever. If you let this guy think he got away with it, if you see his interview, this is a narcissist. They should have got that guy in a room and let him talk, right? He would have buried himself. No, they're going to bury him anyway. My gut says there's going to be a lot of forensic evidence that's going to be uh, found with this uh, with this body. Venus, please be careful and I hope to see you on another show. I uh, and this is emotional. It, it, it's it's a uh, this is a tough subject. It really is. You know, this is uh, the end. Seriously, this is a, this is uh, my takeaway. My uh, how I intended to end this show is that I have a feeling that what we're going to see is uh, Stefan. Stefan's dead. He knows it. There's nothing this dude can do. He's got no play. Thank you so much, Christy Hughes. You are appreciated. Thank you. He has no play. You understand? When, when you get busted and you go in, you, you start evaluating what you're going to do. How do I fight this, right? What kind of lawyer am I going to get? Should I be trying to take this thing to the box? Should I be trying to cut a plea? This dude has one card, right? What the hell is he going to do? What can he do to get any love? I'll be honest, nothing. I promise they're not going to give him a whole lot of love, but they'll let him write out a proper letter, which is where you write down what you can tell them and then they they you know go and negotiate or whatever, but there's going to be something. They may they may offer him a nicer uh, location to do his time. For real, you know if you're if you're that jacked up on paperwork, if they can say to you, if you have uh, a charge that's this dirty, right? In prison that's called having bad paperwork or a dirty jacket. The jacket is all of your information that you throughout your entire criminal history is your jacket. This is called having a filthy jacket. And people with messed up crimes like this, they can say to them, hey, how about we get you out of this state? How about we put you in a prison in another state where you might blend in a little better? Because everybody in Florida has now got a pretty good idea who's stepping stones. 
but you give us up everything you know on uh, on her and what her involvement is, and uh, maybe we'll let you do your time in Indiana. Maybe even we let you do your time in Indiana under a different name. Trust me, that happens. They do that crap. But I don't know if they're going to have to. I think that when it's all said and done, uh, one of them, I don't think they're going to end up the uh, the great relationship happy couple <laughs> when this is all said and done. I think there's a pretty good chance they're not going to be together. One of them is going to roll on the other. It just depends on how that goes down. All right. I have a feeling that, uh, yeah, he uh, he is definitely not going to do easy time, and he's going to wish. I think you're right that he's going to that he will have gotten the death of this. I want to explain this to people one last time, and you know what else? I'm not trying to spike the football, but it, it, we keep seeing all of these people that everybody told me never get attacked when they go to prison because they protect all these people. Well, a lot of them are getting attacked. Right? You may have noticed. R. Kelly got stomped out, right? All of these people that, you know, are well, well-known well cases. These guys are going up and they're having to deal with it. This does happen. You, you can put somebody in a protective unit, but that doesn't mean that tomorrow morning you're not going to have to protect somebody who's already killed three people. He may have to go on protective custody. He, he doesn't cease being a killer because he gets put in the same unit, right, as Stephen Stearns. I promise you he isn't going to do soft time. And hopefully that, uh, I don't know, I take some, uh, I take some solace in that. Maybe that makes me a better person. But, uh, oh, I really wanted to see an offensive comment, Lisa, but I can't find it. I think Lisa said, sorry, I hope that didn't offend anybody. I was kind of hoping it was a good one, but uh, I didn't see it. You're good, Lisa. I promise you. Uh, you're not going to offend me. Oh, you got no clue what's happening? Uh, Christy will bring you up to speed real quick before we go, because I don't want you to be in the dark. Um, the Madeline Soto case is a beautiful 13-year-old girl who just turned 13 and disappeared. She was supposedly being dropped off at school the night after her 13th birthday party. She doesn't make it to school. She is seen in a car with uh, her mom's boyfriend, sometimes called a stepdad, sometimes called a partner, always a scumbag. He stops by, throws some stuff in the dumpster. She's seen in the car that time not moving. They assume that she's already passed at that point. And then the police get into his phone and find enough stuff on there, dating back two years of him abusing Madeline. Exactly how you think. Uh, so that uh, 60... Uh, charges of abuse of a minor. Uh, and yeah, nothing wrong with that, Lisa. I think that that man could use a little uh, Lorena Bobbitt haircut. I think that there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I don't think that would bother anybody. Um, and he will beg for the death sentence. I promise. The day is coming where he's going to wish that he's gonna, not going to be here. But the. Uh, so this, what we were talking about today was the fact that the mother, Jennifer Soto, and uh, her on and off again, um, pederast, low-life uh, boyfriend, a guy by the name of Stefan Stearns, both did uh, interviews, not with the police, but with a local film crew uh, for local television. One of those, let's get the word out so that we can uh, try to get... Um, you know, information out so we can maybe find your daughter. And it's the strangest two interviews you've ever seen in your life. I'm encouraging everybody to go and look at them. And I've come out and said, in my humble opinion, the mom's filthy. Uh, a couple of people have said, hey, you don't want to be too hasty. And I've said, I agree. Normally that is the case. I don't feel like I'm hasty on this one. You go watch, tell me what you think. I think I will probably come out right on this one. If not, I'll be happy to uh, apologize to... Uh, to the woman. This is my opinion on this one, and that's pretty much the show in a nutshell. Did I miss anything? There's a cat in a basket, but it hasn't come yet. Uh, you 
Yeah, Christy Hughes, that's kind of been our question, right? Uh, why wasn't mom kind of doing the sling blade thing? Well, some people believe maybe she was being abused herself. And I, I think that there's probably some of that that was going on. I think this sicko may have been, uh, you know, this this could be a, a type of Stockholm syndrome. I think that that could be legit. We're not 100% sure on this. Uh, we will find out. Either way, I don't give her a pass. That's me. But the rest of uh, the rest of you can uh, do that and make those opinions on your own, and I will uh, absolutely respect that. All right, people. I'm Captain Tommy Scoble. We're going to do this again in a little bit. See this right there? That. Oh, there's a cat in a basket, and the sweetest little animal in the world. Thank you, honey. I appreciate you. It's not always the, the most fun, but I do try to do the stuff that you guys ask me to take a look at. And more of you have asked me about this case, I think, than uh, almost anything. So, um, oh, Dastardly Saboteur. Good Lord. Uh, you know what? There are people that, uh, I mean, you know, Casey Anthony comes to mind, right? Um, yeah, there are people that are just aren't wired for that, to be sure. To be sure on that set. All right, people, we will see you on the next one. All right. I'm Captain Tommy. Bye-bye.